While making this channel, I have created theories in multiple videos due to the large amount of research and rewatches of Happy Tree Friends episodes. And along the way, I have made multiple theories that I have not shown to anyone yet. So please enjoy my 10 Happy Tree Friends theories. In Junk in the Trunk, you can see multiple posters with missing pets. But on the top left, there is a hedgehog and later on, you can see it in Lumpy's house. What if that hedgehog belongs to Flaky? And she chose it to be her pet because she can relate to it due to it also having quills. And she would probably do a good job of taking care of it due to her caring about a chick that fell out of her nest. In As You Wish, Disco Bear wishes for a giant disco ball and not for Giggles and Petunia to like him. He probably thinks that they are interested in him anyway, but don't want to admit it, which would explain how overconfident and persistent he is. So why ask for Gills and Petunia when they will come back to you in time? Well, that is probably what he thinks. In Rafa Khan, you can see Cub is wearing a mask of the Banjo Frenzy version of Lumpy. So is Banjo Frenzy a show or movie that takes place in the HCF world, just like the Buddhist Monkey episodes, or in the city, and very likely Mirror Mirror, and Cub watches it and is a fan. Lifty and Shifty might be poor, we know that they are kleptomaniacs, which means that they have trouble resisting the urge to steal, but maybe they also steal because they are poor, because they live in an apartment unlike the other characters which looks very empty, and the only valuable item inside seems to just be TVs, which they most likely stole, and they can also be seen stealing essentials like food. Flaky's quills have been seen to be very sharp, like in Happy Trails Part 2, Bring Hijinks, Last Act, Let It Slide, From A to Zoo Part 2, Easy Comb Easy Go, Winging it, party animal, and snow place to go. But in many episodes, they have seen not to be sharp at all, and these spikes seem to just be like normal hair, due to other characters not being harmed by them, like in keeping it real, let it slide, party animal, royal flush, and towards the end of From A to Z Part 2. And no one and Flaker herself seem to be concerned about her quills. What if we can't see her quills, and they are hidden under her fur? Which would explain why a lot of the spikes on her back don't look needle shaped. And what if Flaky's quills are retractable like claws on the lion? Which would explain why no one is concerned about her quills, and the multiple times no one is harmed by them. But sometimes she forgets to keep them in her body when she is under stress, or for a while after she calms down which would explain why she kills chickens with them, but Lumpy picks her up and he is not harmed. When she loses her skin, and a lot of her quills and Lumpy wears it and not being harmed, and why Lumpy has his arm on her back without being harmed, but later after swallowing peanuts again, causes her quills to pop balloons. If we look at the episode Breaking Wind, the toxic gas from Splendid burns flaky skin and fur off, and when it burns her spikes, we can see her quills underneath. In the episode called Rafa Khan, Splendid is at a table with merchandise waiting to give autographs. But Crow Marmot is also at a table with multiple cursed idols. So maybe Crow Marmot is in a movie or TV series that stars him and the cursed idol is included. Or maybe Crow Marmot has history with the Cursed Idol. Crow Marmot was around in prehistoric times. And maybe he was around when the temple that is seen in Idol Curiosity was in use. In the only episodes where the idol has a major part in the plot, maybe the Cursed Idols that we see hiding in the background would just be merchandise from Crow Marmot. In Blind Date, Petunia ends up with Disco Bear. Most likely because they were both on a blind date. Petunia sprays Disco Bear 
and many would assume that Petunia sprayed him with pepper spray. And I used to think the same thing too. But after seeing this episode so many times, if you look where her hands are when she moves, it looks like that she needs to pee. It would not be out of character for her, because she has been seen needing a pee in Happy Trails Part 1. And winging it. And she is also seen needing a pee in the episode select for episode 6 to 10 in the first Blood DVD. <laughs> Nutty is aware of his addiction to anything sweet, and he wants to quit, but he can't, just like many smokers. And that is possibly why he is seen in the butchers very likely wanted to try some meat in a change of heart. Why he tries coffee in choose to the mouthful and why he has a bowl of fruit in concrete solution. After he severely hurts himself in false alarm, Sniffles locks him in the room and after a while, Nutty loses his addiction and acts happy, which likely shows that he always wanted to quit. And in the episode From Hero to Eternity and Random Acts of Silence, Sniffles is possibly trying to show Nutty things that he could enjoy to distract him from anything sweet. On Splendid's Collect Them All card, it says that he is afraid of heights. This is weird because he has not shown this in any episode. So maybe there was a time where he was afraid of heights and in time he overcome it. Possibly because he really wanted to save lives and help other characters. But maybe he got to a point where he ended up being tired of trying to save or help him, which led to him sometimes not being in the mood. In the episode called Double Whammy Part 1, Flippy dreams about having tea with three pain wings. The second time he dreams, evil Flippy's arm with a knife bursts out of the chest of one. What if these three pain wings were not just imaginary, and they were at one point Flippy's pets. Maybe one time something made him flip out and turn to his evil side known as Flickpy and cut through a pen wing with a knife and made the other two run away. And that is why he dreams about having tea with them and the second time he dreams it is not just a nightmare but more of a flashback. Also a missing pet poster with a pen wing can be seen in Junk in the Trunk and later on in Lumpy's house, two penguins can also be seen. I know that many people have asked me to talk about Pot's wife before her death. There is not much known about his wife, but many people have pointed out that Pop and Cub are showing sadness at a gravestone in Can't Stop Coffin, which very likely belongs to Pot's wife. I have noticed that in A Vicious Cycle, that Pop has a window box which more likely belonged to his wife, though she very likely loves flowers and hearts. And then read him and weep, Pop is about to throw a vase with flowers inside, but then changes his mind, possibly because it belonged to his wife. Michael Lippmann said that there may be a battery. If this is true, maybe something like what Pop did to Cub in read him and weep happened to his wife. Apart from Cub very likely remembering her, he can't stop coughing, he might really miss her. Maybe when he saw the monster in Cub John Z, he saw it as not just a friend that he felt safe around, but maybe he saw it as his mum. Additionally, the monster calms down after Cub jumps into its arms. So maybe it just wanted a friend, and taking care of a child made it happy. And it seems to become Cub's adoptive mother, and has an apron and cookies at the end making the monster the closest thing to seeing Cub's mum in the series. <laughs>